Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's as we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. During this COVID time, we ask that there is no congregational singing throughout the Mass. We invite you to reflect and pray quietly. The bishop requests that communion is only to be received in the hand. As you leave today, you may drop your collection in the basket at the entrances. Thank you. Please stand as you are able. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty, Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most fearless fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, 
But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news, fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with the power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any of you should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him, at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. Advent is a time of preparation, a time that we are called to prepare our lives, prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls for the coming of Christ, that we might recognize the Lord is imminent. His coming is very soon. 
and that we might prepare ourselves by seeking that repentance, by seeking that mercy, that forgiveness of our sins. And this is an essential and important aspect of the season of Advent. And it is, in fact, some, one of the many things that we recognize about it. It is a good time for us to go to the sacrament of reconciliation, to confess our sins, to be absolved, that we might prepare the way of the Lord, that we might make straight that wasteland in our hearts and our lives. And this is very much so what uh, I think is intended in part of this reading, as it says, fill in those valleys, the valley of despair, the valley of doubt, fill those in, in confidence and in faith in Jesus Christ. The mountains, the hills of, of pride and selfishness are called to be made low, that we might humble ourselves and seek the Lord, that we might make straight that pathway in our hearts, that pathway for the arrival of Christ within us. We remember this, and again, confession is an important aspect to help us on that journey of faith to do those tasks. But I think it is also important to remember, my brothers and sisters, that that's not the only task we have this season. Advent is not just about preparing internally, preparing ourselves, personally seeking God and that reconciliation. It's more than that. That's an important and an essential aspect and should not and cannot be forgotten. But there is further meaning to this message, these passage of scripture. For when it says, those valleys shall be filled in, the mountains and hills made low, it's talking about having a real impact in the world around us as well. That our faith might not just be something that is internal, something that is hard to see, something that is hidden, something that is just between me and God. Well, that aspect is important. It's also meant to have an impact in the world around us. It's meant to be on display. It's meant to be a witness for others. It's meant to be a light shining brightly before others, that the light of faith that we have been given in Jesus Christ may be broadcast to the world at large. We are called to have an impact in our world. And this season especially, that the actions we do reflect what goes on in our hearts, reflect our faith, reflect the teachings that Christ himself has given us, that he has given to his church. And might we go forth then into the world, proclaiming as John the Baptist did about this repentance, that we might go forth and act to care for the poor, to seek to cure and to comfort those who are sick, those who suffer, that we might go forth and people might recognize in us, in the church, that God is at work, that God is very much alive, and that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and he is coming very soon. My brothers and sisters, this Advent, don't just focus on yourself. Don't just focus on what happens inside, but have that conviction and have that courage and hear that call like Jesus himself to go forth amongst the people and make that impact, that positive impact for others as well. That you might be prepared for when Christ comes, you will see all these things, all these things will be made known. And he will rejoice, and we will be able to rejoice with him for eternity. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary 
and became mad. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the law and the holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism before the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the coming of Christ, we offer our prayers and petitions. That Christ may fill the Pope, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops with spiritual gifts and graces, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That under the protection of Christ, our times may be peaceful, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that all men and women would turn to Jesus with their whole hearts, especially in this season of Advent. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may banish disease, drive out hunger, and ward off every affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all those who are suffering, from loneliness in our community, that they may receive the consoling love of God. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the consecrated life, priesthood, and diaconate, especially in the Diocese of St. Cloud, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially for Adam Crump, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Paul Novak, Parker Fuchs, Judy Blummer, Allie Mae Lang, and Marguerite Gray, who passed away recently. May they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Join us in praying our sister parish prayer. Created God, you made this world and saw that it was good. In your creation, you have gifted us those many cultures. Through this diversity, there is much that you can teach us in our relationships with each other. Today, the Holy Spirit inspires us to do global connections with the message of love throughout the world. We ask that you continue to bless our sister parish relationship between Blessed Sacrament of Orient Kenya and the churches of St. Michael of St. Cloud and St. Joseph's of Lake Park. He has this the one who united himself to the whole human race and who walks with us as we all go to you together, our brother and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The announcements. We are inviting all parishioners, family and friends of our four parishes to attend the one-hour adoration of the Blessed Sacrament this Sunday, December 6th, at St. Michael's at 3.30 p.m. during this season of Advent. We will have adoration, a brief talk on loneliness and isolation, and the rosary will be said following by quiet time and mass at 5 p.m. All are welcome. The calendars for the year 2021 have arrived and are available on the table in the gathering space. We have a limited supply, so one per family, please. And remember that uh, this Tuesday, December 8th, is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, generally a holy day of obligation. Uh, we are still dispensed from that obligation in this diocese, but again, it's a not great opportunity to attend Mass to acknowledge this Solemnity of Mary. Uh, there is Mass for the vigil on Monday evening at 6 p.m. at St. Joseph, and then we have our ACC Mass, or uh, Area Catholic Community Mass uh, at, I believe, St. Paul's at 6.30 on Tuesday evening. Uh, information in the bulletin for that as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. I invite you to kneel and join in praying our prayer to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who call about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.